Well, as the weekend begun, it's going to be crazy because there's a lot of wrestling that we can cover so much. But however, I decided to narrow down certain ones for all of you. First things first, we're going to be reviewing Choco Pro's much recent show, number 366, with three matches. The best bros once again are back together, but this time they take on two of their adversaries from separate teams, Masahiro Takanashi and Chonchiru. Then we move on with Stardom in Kobe. Now this is of course a prelude to certain matches that will take place on the following day in Osaka and then of course next week taking place at the All-Star Grand Queendom. Then we move on with two back-to-back -back AEW shows, Collision and of course Rampage which is their go-home shows before we head to Dynasty. And then we wrap it up with some news updates, a very small one with one um, update on a serious promotion and of course some developments in the world of pro wrestling. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone, all things that it's pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, DNA, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews from various promotions, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Europe. The UK, Canada, wherever pro wrestling exists, but it's not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos, such as, of course, topics of the wrestlers, the promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to talk about. We also do more news updates. If I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate video by itself. We also do, of course, real timing news updates to keep you guys on alert if something has happened in the world of pro wrestling that needs to be addressed ASAP. Then of course we have the Unagi Sayaka watch and various other cool things as well. So if you like what you see please subscribe to us so click on that subscribe button you'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool wrestling content on this channel as well. But if you like this episode please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment in the description down below. Now all introductions are set aside. I believe it's time for me to get the show on the road. So let's begin with our very first review, and this is from Choco Pro. Okie dokie. Choco Pro number 366, it opened up with our very favorite tag team, the Best Bros. Balianaki and Mei Shruga reunited once again. Uh, we haven't seen Balian for a while due to the fact that he was doing some U.S. tour. But it's great to see them back. But the one thing that was concerning to me, as you know, they are the current um, Asian Dream Tag Team Champions. Sooner or later, someone has to challenge those two. But, however... They decide to give the lowdown and what's going on, what matches they're in, not to mention they're in the main event. So we'll get to that in a bit. But right now, let's move on with our very first match. We have tag team action. We have too much energy. Chi Koshikawa, she teams up with Sayako Bihiro. Their opponents are none other than Antonio Honda. And of course, all the way from colors, Saki. Now, this is an interesting combination. Now, I'm not talking about Chi and uh, and Obihiro. The reason is this. Antonio Honda normally teams up with Tokiko Kiyohara. Or possibly uh, Masahiro Takanashi. But as for Saki. Normally Saki. Ha her opponents. That she, the tag partner she normally teams up. Well one of them is currently right now in stardom. As a member of one of my favorite factions in stardom. Uh, Yuna Mizumori. Uh, she has teamed up with Balanaki before. Uh, she could have brought someone with. Um, 
from colors like Hikari Shimizu or Yuko uh, Sakurai. Who knows? But nonetheless, um, the match was went well. However, the obvious thing is this: as Antonio Honda and and Saki have the most experience, uh, that played out in a good factor. But however, we know that she is very capable wrestler. She's a strong wrestler. Not to mention, she does unorthodox things in the in the mat. So does Sayaka Obihiro. But that did not do any well for them because it was Saki who picked up the win when she pinned Chiko Shikawa, giving her the dub for herself and her teammate. Now, our next match, we have Sayaka, uh, the smiling violence, taking on one of the deathmatch queens, Rina Yamashita. So, you would think this is going to be interesting. Now, we have seen Sayaka over time has shown up, shown a little bit of the aggressiveness in Choco Pro. But when it comes to Rina Yamashita, you know she also can be aggressive. That doesn't change anything. However, you would think that um, Sayaka, who being the homegrown girl here, nope, it did not do any well because it was Rina Yamashita who picked up the win. And just like that, it was over. Now, our main event, we have Chon Chiru and Masahiro Takanashi. Now, keep in mind, these two had the multiple tag partners. And they all, both of them had previously challenged for the Asian Dream Tag Team titles on multiple occasions. But we know Masa had a challenge for these belts before, but they faced against the top tag team in Choco Pro and got to move. That is none other than the Best Bros. Now, of course, it's no secret that the that Best Bros had dealt with um, with Chon and of course Masa on separate occasions, either in tag teams or the respective tag team partners that they have, and so on and so on. That played out pretty well. However, you cannot deny. The cohesion between both Balian and and May, they've always been shown their cohesiveness since they formed the Best Bros together. So you would know that they would try to do things to try to calculate how to take out their opponents. But however, you got Chon Chido, who's a bit more of a disciplinary, but also find ways to get out of the situation. You look at Masa, who is a bit more of a slicker guy, who knows how to find a way to get out of the situation. But that did not do any well. However, Mei Shiruga was smart enough to kick Masahiro Takanashi outside of the building through the window, giving her and Balinaki to do a combination move of the double stomp and the diving body press, allowing for Balinaki to pick up the pin, and one, two, three, best bros are over. So if somehow Masa and Chon were able to pick up the win, they would have ish issued a challenge for the Asian Dream Tag Team title, title belts. Now, our last thing we do with these guys is the Jonkin Tournament. This one was the most difficult, and I did not expect, because there were a lot of moving parts. Uh, Balinaki was eliminated in the first round. Uh, Sayaka was eliminated in the second round. But the one person that made it all the way, well, to the uh, to the finals, was May Shruga and, of course, Antonio Honda. So, But it was May who got away with it by winning um, the Junkin tournament and of course winning the piece of chocolate so that's gonna be interesting uh, so we will have another Choco Pro show soon enough but however I do know we do have another got to move show that they did call the the road to uh, Cork and Hall the Challenger so we will see that soon enough uh, when I get an opportunity but as of right now we th end things with uh, Choco Pro move on with stardom in Kobe Okay, Stardom. In Kobe, this took place as well. This is the newest uh, edition that took place. I uh, don't remember exactly the name of the venue, but uh, let's get started. Our first match, we have the latest uh, Cosmic Angel rookies. Um, Sayaka Kurara and Aya Sakura taking on Crazy Star in a non-title match, of course. Uh, you would think this is going to be a very interesting match. Now, we have seen Kurara, who has the most flawless... Spears. It did play it out. She did spear it. Um, I think it was May Sid, I believe. But you have to be more careful when it comes to Zuzu. Now we do know that Sakura has the most impressive um, uh, striking kicks you've ever seen. But unfortunately, that did not do any well for either girl because Kurara ended up in the wrong side of the modified Dragon Slipper by May Sid, winning the match. Now our next match. We have a bit of a four-way match. We have the rookie, Rian, 
Lady C versus Ami Sori versus Natsu Boy. So basically, anything could happen in these type of matches. Now we did see a double swinging, uh, uh, giant swing between both Lady C and Ami Sori. Now those who don't know, they were supposed to be, those who I think might have teamed up in last year's Goddess of Tag League, but uh, don't remember much about that. But yes, um, but however, it was Natsu Boy who pinned, of course. Rian with the Pharaoh gift and just like that it was completely over our next match we have um, a bit of a three-way tag match we have uh, no three-way trios match we have Queen's Quest Miyu Amasaki Azumi and Saya Kamitani versus star members Momokogo Saya Ida and Azuki versus God's Eye Rana Yagami Saki Kashima and Shuri. Now, of course, anything could happen. The one thing that was only that you should be aware of: there's only one person who has a title in their midst, and of course, that's Kashima. Now, of course, if anybody pins her, that's the possibility. But however, these trio, ma these matches are like this. It's so chaotic. The referee can do so much and try to keep up. But unfortunately, uh. This match ended in a uh, with Kamitani pinning Kashima. You probably know what that means, right, folks? Well, that means Kashima ha may have no other choice but to fa uh, put her high speed belt on the line, which she's totally against. Kashima, I mean, Ka uh, Kamitani was trying to remind her, I beat you fair and square, so that means I get a shot. Now, I'm sure it would be interesting to see Kamitani probably having the high speed belt. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, I'm kind of curious if she could actually step up. Now, we know Kamitani's teammate, um, the so-called, should we say, just the temporary leader of Queen's Quest, Azumi, is the master of that. I'm sure she'll get tipping points from her. But during the post-match comments... Uh, Kashima said she's not defending this belt against her. I mean, she already lost it once. She doesn't need to lose it again. So, we'll see what happens. <laughs> now, our next match, we have a um, three uh, a trios match. We have Cosmic Angels, Yuna Mizumori, Tam Nakano, and of course Asayori Anoi. A prelude to what we will see later on in, uh, in, in the All-Star Grand Queendom, uh, of course, Hanan will challenge for this for the white belt soon enough. So basically, you can tell that this match would be more of the momentum. Will Sayori no pick up the momentum before uh, next week? I think so. But Hanan is the one who's been how do I say picking up the momentum ever since winning the the Cinderella tournament. Now, Hanan hasn't shown any cockiness. I think that's something she learned along the way. But she's trying to prove her point that. No matter how things are going to be now from here on out, she has the white belt in her sights. But the obvious question is to Saito Inoue, should she be more careful or should she be concerned? Well, I know that Hanan was the one who sent the direct message to uh, Sayori through um, through uh, Mizumori when she applied a backdrop suplex, I believe that's what it was. And just like that, it was over. So we'll see what happens. Now our next match, we have a bit of a three type of stipulation match that took place in um, I think we have Oedo Tai versus EXV now don't forget it was Momo Wananabe who issued the challenge for the uh, the red belt and of course Micah who is not willing to lose this belt it, it, it accepted the challenge but the real question does tell hold on a second let me pull up some information from here So the obvious thing we ask ourselves when it comes to this, will uh, Momo pick up the win? Well, this, this is how it goes down. It was, it was a, a two out of three falls match. Uh, the first round goes to Momo Munobib when she pinned Waka. Uh, Mina actually pinned Natsuko Tora, and then Micah pinned Fukigen Def. Now, Mina Cherukawa does the most dumbest thing ever. She decided to call out Natsuko Tora, telling her, 
is she jealous of her because she is, of course, traveling overseas. She called her, shut the fuck up, you, um, um, you over, uh, obsessed a foreign bastard. So basically, she, she, uh, in a way, she calls her that she's an aunt, and that's what she is. And of course, Mina tries to counter it, but when it comes to Natsuko Tora, she's not here to please the entire world. She's there to take out those who are unworthy. You see, if you guys remember, Natsuko Tora oh, has a strategic mind where, of course, when it comes to uh, factions who are getting momentum, they're a Pacific threat. And I think that's what was going on. But I think many people are asking themselves now, will we see a, a match between Mina and Natsuko Tora? Most likely we could, but uh, we just got to wait and see until we get to All-Star Grand Queendom. I, but as of right now, I think we're done with, with stardom. So let's move on with AEW Collision. Okay, AEW Collision. It opened up with trios action. We have Adam Copeland, Mark Briscoe, and Eddie Kingston taking on Top Flight and Action, action Andretti. Now, keep in mind, this is, of course, a bit of a warm-up uh, for Copeland, Briscoe, and Kingston before their match against the House of Black at Dynasty. So you would think this is going to be an excellent opener. I have to say it was an excellent opener. I mean, look. There's no denying about these guys as individuals and talented, but the question does tell, can they coexist? And I think that was put through the test, and they did. But not to mention, we do know Top Flight and Action Injury, they have worked together very well for months. I mean, ever since uh, Dante was out for a while, we have seen Darius and Action teamed up very perfectly. But when it comes to Dante returning, that uh, up it up the Amtes, of course, they are also in conversations for trios title, but the obvious question: How will this turn out? I have to say, I like how this match ended in a very perfect ending. Uh, first, it was a back fist by Kingston to um, to Andretti, and then of course he gets speared, and then finally Froggy Bow, and just like that, it was over. And of course, once the match was over. Copeland, Kingston, and Briscoe decided to show some respect to Top Flight and Action Andretti until they were interrupted with, of course, a sudden message from House of Black. However, House of Black decided to target that, of course, um, Copeland has a worse nightmare. Now, he he seems like a little worried, like, what are they talking about? And, of course, Kingston likes saying that these guys are must be nuts, you know, but we'll see what happens in Dynasty. Now, our next match, we have Powerhouse Hobbs versus uh, CJ Esp Esparza. However, I can tell you this match ended when a torture rack. So, basically, you can call it a squash match if you want. But, however, that does not end things there. Of course, the most hated person in AEW, Don Callis, decided to run his mouth. Because of you know what's going to happen this coming Wednesday on Dynamite, John Moxley issued a challenge towards Powerhouse Hobbs. But however, it appears that Don Callis has something in mind. He did state that it he was the genius behind Kenny Omega to become an IWGP champion, the genius behind the Jericho versus Kenny match. But he said that were that there were of course the Japanese people called say, the New Japan said that they were thankful for him for all the things he's done. However, he decided to cash in a favor and reveal that this week on Dynamite. This coming week it's not going to be a straight up match it's going to be for the iwgp world heavyweight title so basically the stakes are now higher for moxley i'm sure moxley will find a way but because he is one of the toughest sobs on the planet but we will see what happens until then now with the result of what happened last wednesday on dynamite jericho as you know he is determined to te the help Hook to teach him to be a better champion. That he is an AEW world champion caliber. So, but he did warn him that he will come for him and the FTW belt to show him what he's talking about. And that will happen on Dynasty. So, I think many of us are very curious about it. 
Now, our next match, we have the Ass Boys, Colton and Austin Gunn taking on the Acclaim. Now, of course, uh, the Acclaim have Batty Ass in their corner, Jay White's on the other. But it took a lot of effort. Now, these two teams know very well how they are. They have faced before in many ways possible. But, of course, Jay White got himself involved when Colton um, pinned Max, and just like that, it was over. But the real question is, does the Acclaim should be worried now because of their usual ways of cutting corners will result of them losing the AEW trios belt? Well, we just got to wait and see. Now, we do see an interview with Brian Danielson of the results of what's going to happen. As you know, he'll be facing Will Ospreay this coming uh, Sunday, or should I say tomorrow. But uh, Will Ospreay comes out and tells him that he had nothing to do with what happened. So basically, Brian Danielson doesn't believe him. So we'll see about that. Now, uh, we do see a little bit of an exclusive video with Tony Storm, who is basically not happy with the results. And she is sending a direct message to her that she's going to make her life a living hell and all that. But we will see. I mean, Thunder Rosa is a very strong wrestler. We have seen her time and time again when she doesn't back down. Now, our next match, we have the Bunkhouse Brawl match, the BCC. Claudio and Danielson taking on, of course, Fletcher and Takeshita. Now, you know they're going to use all kinds of plunder, and they were all going to use ways to soften each other up. Now, keep in mind, Don Callis wants Danielson to soften up. He doesn't want him to be 100%. Will Ospreay does. So, basically, if I was Will Ospreay, dump that creep. That's what I would do. But of course, at some point of the match, we did see that musclehead dork Hobbs trying to get involved. But he got himself entangled with our current IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, John Moxley, teach him a lesson. But we did see, of course, later on at the end of this match, the LaBelle lock was locked with the chain on wrap around Kyle Fletcher's mouth by Brian Danielson. And then, of course, that. And then, of course, Brian Danielson put out a promo about what he believes heaven looks like in his own vision. So we will see what happens when we get to Dynasty. Now, Chris Satlander, Stokely Hathaway, and Willa Nightingale had a direct message. Now, I think this video promo was a really good one. Uh, Willa was saying, you know, we are F up, which means fired up. But Stokely's like saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where I'm coming from, F you means, of course, is F you. Brody King, F.U. Ju Julia the Hart, the former, soon to be uh, TBS champion. And of course, Willow goes out, gives her little nice promo and all that. And then, of course, when she said the word bitch, uh, <laughs> Chris Sattler said, World Star. And Stokely goes, ah! I thought that was amazing. I mean, I thought it was a pretty good way to e end things. But yeah. Now, our next match, we have Sky Blue versus Layla Hirsch. Now, we have seen Sky Blue has developed a lot. Ever since she went dark, she has uh, evolved a lot more. Uh, you would think that Layla Hirsch, who is a, a, a brilliant technical wrestler, would have found ways to overcome it. But no, somehow Sky Blue was able to overturn it when she put her in a dragon sleeper. Layla Hirsch had no other choice but to tap. Now, our main event, we have, of course, the Elite Versus Pac in FTR. Now, don't forget, Pac will challenge Okada for the uh, the Continental Championship in Dynasty. And as for FTR and the Bucks, they will meet them to crown the new AEW ta World Tag Team Champions. But of course, things have gone crazy back and forth between these two teams, as always. But it was pa uh, Pac with the broken arrow on Matt. Uh, Jackson picking up the win. However, we did see a beatdown with that was coming up, but luckily Daniel Garcia showed up to help Pac and FTR up. And then of course, we did see Pac was able to put Okada in the brutalizer, try to withstand it as possible. But the real question is, does Pac has Okada's number, or will Okada somehow survive his little onslaught against Pac? Well, we will see what happens on Dynasty. So I think that's pretty much it right now with AEW Collision. Let's move on with AEW Rampage. Okay, AEW Rampage. 
Now, we did hear what happened in Collision. Don Callis has raced the six now with the IWGP World Heavyweight title at stake. Now, what does John Moxley have to respond for that? Now, he's fully aware about the stakes. He now knows what he needs to contend right now, knowing full well that Don Callis will love nothing more to have that title in, his, in the Don Callis family. But we will see what happens on Dynamite. Now, as you know, we'll be heading to Dynasty very soon on this one, and we're looking forward to that. Excuse me. Our first, fat, uh, first match of the night on Rampage we have what they call a high fly elimination match. We have RVD versus uh, or Isaiah Cassidy versus Lee Johnson versus Commander. Now the idea is this is going to be elimination match. Uh, Isaiah Cassidy this uh, eliminated Lee Johnson by pinning him, and then of course um, he gets eliminated uh, by Commander. That leaves only RVD and Commander in the mix. But I think this was a very good match because it showed, okay, who is a bit of a high flyer. But with RVD, who we all know that he is a fantastic wrestler. But he picked up the win when he applied the five-star frog splash. And just like that, it was over. Now, our next match, we have Yuka Sakasaki taking on Emi Sakura. Now, these two ladies are no strangers. Now, if you guys have been part of the AEW bandwagon... You guys should know that these two ladies have teamed up before. They were actually part of the very first ever pay-per-view by AEW back in 2019 during the first ever Double or Nothing. And they teamed up with Aja Kong at that time. But however, they were the team that lost to Riho, Hikaru Shida, and of course, Ryo Mizunami. But however, Yuka Sakasaki, who we have known now that she is... No longer with Tokyo Shop for Wrestling. It's great to see her again. But however, how was she faced with someone who is very more methodical, like the queen herself, Ami Sakura? Well, apparently that she may have been methodical, but however, it was Yuka Sakasaki who outsmarted her by pulling off a move where she was in the ring ropes and then she just kind of sloop sacks her as she's gone down and then picked up the win. And just like that, it was completely over. Now, we all probably thought maybe um, Serena Deeb was going to show up, but nope, it did not, so I was a little disappointed. But there were people who said that they noticed that Yuka was kind of bit out of it or something. We don't know if she's okay, but we'll see. Now, those who've been fully aware of what happened after Dynamite, th this was an exclusive thing that they posted in uh, for the AEW Rampage. Cool Hand Ange talked about, of course, uh, how he left behind his friends, his family, uh, finding the woman that he loves and all that, but he felt that it was all uh, all or nothing when he faced against Zack Knight, and he felt that now that he lost, he has nothing to fight for anymore. So he was already on the verge of saying that he was going to retire, but however, Ruby Soho decided to come out because she could not stand what she was about to hear, but she wanted him to co the, to understand that he was wrong, that he wasn't actually. Um, has nothing left, but he does have something that that is important to him. And she told him right there and now that she was pregnant. Uh, this was in faction right at, actually happened. There are people that posted this clip all over social media, and you probably know the rest. So it's a very interesting storyline. I do it, but yes, folks, it is true. They are legit, legitimate couple, and of course, they're having a child. So uh, we'll see what happens. I'm kind of wondering if they're going to continue that storyline. With Soraya, you know, being discussed that Ruby is pregnant with uh, with Angelo, with his baby and that sort of thing. I don't know. I mean, it would tell a fantastic story, but we will see what happens. Now, our main event of the entire of Rampage, we do see the Undisputed Kingdom, consistent of Mike Bennett, Matt Taven, the so-called Melvin, <laughs> and Roderick Strong, our current AEW International Champion. They face against Rocky Romero, Daddy Magic, and Kyle O'Reilly. Now, don't forget, Kyle O'Reilly will ch be challenging for the AEW International title against um, Roderick Strong. But, however, this is a bit of now showing. Now, Roderick Strong attacked Kyle O'Reilly because he felt that Kyle had no business intending to try to challenge him for the AEW International belt. But, however, Kyle O'Reilly, well, this time he's going to take everything from him. 
but he was able to pick up the win applying the armbar onto, of course, Bennett, and just like that, it's over. But however, if I was a Roderick Strong, I would be more careful knowing that this time it's personal. So we'll see what happens when it comes to Dynasty. So I think that's pretty much it. what we have for all the reviews. Let's move on to our last and final thing, news updates. Okie dokie, so welcome to our news update. So let's talk about, uh, we only have one update with one particular promotion at this moment. Uh, it was announced by House of Glory for their upcoming Cinco de Mayo event. Uh, Aerostar will be making his debut. Uh, those who are not familiarized with them, Aerostar is a, a tremendous high flyer. He's one of my personal favorites. This guy does the most high flying daredevil stuff in AAA. And this guy really blew my mind. So you should check him out. Go on um, on YouTube and you guys will see why. So I'm so happy that he'll make his um, House of Glory debut. Now for some interesting developments. Many of you may remember Naomi, who is, in fact, the ex-fiance of MJF. Uh, it appears that she's back into painting, and she painted a portrait where you see Rat, uh, Cody Rhodes with his wife after winning the the WWE Undisputed Championship, and they're calling this, like, uh, story over. So basically, I have to say, I'm glad that she's doing great, that she's um, getting back into what she loves doing best, um, you know, moving forward with her life. I'm sure she'll be okay, and I think many of you probably would like to hear how she's doing. Because as you know, uh, you may have heard that MJF is dating Alicia Atub, but that's how it is now. So right now, I'd say Naomi's doing great. I'm happy for her that she's getting back into doing what she loves doing, painting. So hopefully we'll get to see more of her work. I'm sure many of you would like to hear more about that. Hope, uh, I'll keep you tabs on that. Now, this one was re reported by PW Insider regarding Tessa Blanchard. There's been indications that she may be headed back to TNA. Now, I don't know if that's in the indication. Now, if you guys remember during the pandemic, Tessa Blanchard pissed off the management because she did not do any video promos that she was unable to send from while she was stuck in Mexico to to the shows. It put them in a position to dis, to terminate her because of her behavior. No promotion here in the United States were able to that wanted to sign her, but we do know she was wrestling down in Mexico with CMLL for a while. But I don't know if it's true about TNA. They want her back. But we just got to wait and see when that happens. Now, as you know, Jinder Mahal was released from WWE. McIntyre put out a tweet about this saying, showed them what We showed them once, now show them again, bro. And of course, uh, I think many people often say that maybe they wasted Jinder Mahal's mistakes. Like, we know he's a very talented wrestler. We know he can do more. But I feel like WWE really dropped the ball on him. Like they did not use utilize them enough. So we'll see what happens in the near future. Now for our last update here. Uh, this one was during a seedling event. Uh, the Yoshi promotion. Arisa Nakajima has announced that she'll be retiring from pro wrestling. And this will take place on August 23rd in Corkin Hall. So, uh, it's still unclear what's the significance of it. I wouldn't be surprised if it has something to do with her injury or that she felt it's time for her to just call it, uh, call it quits. But she did, they did announce that her final opponent will be none other than Hiroyo Matsumoto. And this was a very unusual pick because, uh, those who remember last year, she got hurt because of her. And it was kind of unusual for that. But we'll see. But I don't know what's the significance for nakajima to decide to retire but we will see what happens down the line uh i'll keep you guys updated on arisa nakajima and we'll go from there but as of right now i believe it's time to call it a day well i hope everybody enjoys this episode uh coming up as you know we have aew dynasty now we do know 
the much recent show from Stardom Osaka. And Osaka will uh, has already taken place. But I will be doing that as well. I uh, probably will be reviewing that. And then, of course, um, I'll probably do TNA Rebellion since I was I was unable not to do it here. Uh, there's an amount of time that I was unable, but we'll go. I'm still behind on everything else, but we will see. We do have GCW's uh, How High. I may do that at another later time because I need to catch up with the collective. But we'll see what happens. So there's a lot of wrestling happening. Uh, right now, we just focus what we can at this point. So that's the initial plan. Uh, TNA Rebellion, uh, Stardom um, in Osaka, and then, of course, uh, Dynasty. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but as of right now, we'll just leave things as it is. And I'll say this. I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.